There are a number of videos on YouTube about Curry's paradox, but as far as I know, they all deal with the famous geometrical illusion created by Paul Curry. Uh, and interesting though that is, I want to present a different Curry's paradox. This is the paradox in logic. Um, I'm going to present this paradox informally, then I'll detail two uh, very basic formal versions. Right, consider this conditional. Uh, we'll name it 1, and the conditional is, if 1 is true, then the moon is made of cheese. The first question is, is this conditional true or false? Is 1 as a whole true or false? Well, suppose it's true. If the conditional is true, then the antecedent, namely 1 is true, is true, because, uh, as you can see, it the antecedent just asserts the truth of the conditional. It's just describing itself accurately. Right, OK, that's not paradoxical. But now consider we have a true conditional with a true antecedent. And by modus ponens, we can therefore infer the consequent. So the moon is made of cheese. Right, well, obviously that's absurd. Clearly then, we shouldn't assume that the conditional is true. So, let's assume that it's false instead. Well, in that case, the antecedent, one is true, is false, since it assigns the wrong truth value to itself, obviously, because one is actually false. Now, the problem is, by the truth tables for the conditional, all conditionals with a false antecedent are true. Uh, so, one must be true. Um, here are the truth tables for the conditional uh, in, in standard logic and you can see that every conditional with a false antecedent is true in each of the in all of the cases where a is false the conditional as a whole is true so if our antecedent is false then in fact the whole conditional is true um, but now we have the same problem as before our conditional is true but if one is true the antecedent is true because it describes itself accurately. Hence, again, we have a true conditional with a true antecedent, so we can infer the consequence. The moon is made of cheese. So it seems that whether we assign this conditional true or whether we assign it false, we're forced to conclude that the moon is made of cheese. We have here a, a serious paradox. Um, now, it may appear that one obvious line of attack um, is in the account I gave of the conditional. Uh, I said that any conditional with a false antecedent is true, and uh, the, the truth tables here clearly demonstrate that. Um, but as I'm sure some of you are aware, there are many competing accounts of conditionals. Uh, there are many different ideas about how they work. This truth table here represents how standard logic handles conditionals. Uh, but perhaps all Curry's paradox tells us is that standard logic is wrong about this. Maybe that's all this demonstrates. Um, well, the problem with that answer is that standard, the standard account of conditionals isn't at all essential to Curry's paradox. Uh, and to see that, we just have to take a look at how it works more formally. Um, I'm going to present two different ways of deriving it. There are technical details that I'm going to leave out. I just want to give you a basic idea of how this works. So the first thing we have to stipulate is that we have some sentence A equivalent to if A then B. This is just like the curry sentence we saw in the last slide. Remember, we had, if this sentence is true, then the moon is made of cheese. The antecedent is essentially just an assertion of the whole conditional. Um, to make this clear, consider the T schema. This is a more technical point that you can ignore if you want. I just want to go over it to, to make sure we've covered everything. Um, the T-schema is, is this, and you read this as, as saying A is true if and only if A. That's what T-A means. T-A just means A is true. The sentence A is true. For example, the sentence snow is white is true if and only if snow is white. So A might be snow is white. Quite obvious. So think about our conditional 1. What is the basic structure of it? Well, 1 says that if one is true, then the moon is made of cheese. That's what one is. It says, if one is true, then the moon is made of cheese. So now think about what makes one as a whole true. Given the T schema here, one is true if and only if this conditional holds. 
Okay, one is one is true if and only if this conditional holds. Um, now, what I'm doing just for ease of presentation here is I'm cutting off these truth predicates, and then I'm I'm changing the if and only if to equivalence. But I, I'm sure you'll get how this works. Right, on with the derivation. The first step in in this version is to write if a then a, and that's just our first assumption there. Um, now, what's important to note about this first step is we're not saying a is true. Uh, this is more like saying if a is true, then a is true. A may very well be false, but surely the conditional if a then a is not false. Um, just think about, I don't know, the statement Pegasus exists. Well, the statement Pegasus exists is false, but the conditional if Pegasus exists, then Pegasus exists, that's surely true. Right, but now recall that the conditional if a then b is equivalent to a. So this allows us to substitute if a then b for either of these a's, and I'm going to substitute it for the second a. So we now have if a then if a then b. The next step is probably the most suspect one in this proof, uh, and it's that from if a then if a then b, we can infer just if a then b. This is a structural rule called contraction, um, and if we had however many a's added to the to the front of this, it allows us to cut them off at will. It's an intuitively plausible rule, I suppose, um, but I, I think it's the one most open to question here. Right then, now remember, if a then b and a are equivalent, so again we can perform a simple substitution and derive a, but now note that we have if a then b and a. We have the conditional and its antecedent. So we can apply modus ponens to derive b. And remember b can represent absolutely anything. It can be the statement the moon is made of cheese or whatever you like. OK, let's have a look at an alternative derivation. Again, uh, a is just if a then b, it's equivalent. Uh, in this proof, the first step is the statement of a rule called assertion. Assertion, as you can see, is essentially just modus ponens. Um, it says that if you have A and if A then B, then you can infer B. That's, that's basically what this is here, it's just modus ponens. So this particular assumption is uh, surely unassailable. Um, now, a is equivalent to if a then b, so I can substitute I can substitute a in here, which means we now have a if a and a then b. Um, but a and a is obviously just equivalent to a, meaning we can derive if a then b. And again, we can substitute a for if a then b, so we have a. And here, again, we have the conditional and its antecedent so we can derive its consequent. Just like that. That's Curry's paradox. Given a Curry sentence such as if A is true then the moon is made of cheese, uh, well very simple rules of inference seem to allow us to derive that the moon is indeed made of cheese. Um, it's an interesting paradox there. Well I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.